That's very important in arguing that these are two separate disorders. And the pattern of comorbidity suggests that. By the way, if you don't have any risk for ODD or CD, you don't have any risk for substance abuse, antisocial personality, or crime. Because those disorders are the precursors to antisocial behavior, psychopathy, criminal behavior, and drug abuse. And since you don't have those, we would predict that your life course is going to be quite different from people with impulse control disorders. We do, however, see an opposite pattern. There's a high risk for depression linked to this disorder. But it's not depression. One of the things we looked at is, are we simply giving depression another name here? And it turns out that the majority of people with SCT don't qualify for depression, but they're more likely to than ADHD or typical people, which means that there's something about this disorder that predisposes to depression, but it isn't just depression. So again, a very important difference here. So there is a stronger link to what is called the internalizing dimension of psychopathology, anxiety and depression, but especially depression. Whereas ADHD is a stronger link to the externalizing disorders, the conduct problems, the antisocial behavior, the drug use, the risk taking, ODD, so on. So that's a very interesting pattern. Now recently, two papers were published this month in that journal that looked at personality traits linking up to these two disorders. ADHD links up with risk-taking and low levels of conscientiousness, concern for the future. You're disinhibited, immediate, live in the now, damn the torpedoes kind of person. We would refer to you as being low conscientious and having a high time preference, meaning you want it now. Right? Waiting is very hard for you. With this, we don't see that at all. So you see here that ADHD is linked to sensitivity to rewards, risk-taking, and low conscientiousness, which I didn't put up here, whereas SCT is linked to an oversensitivity to punishment, so that they're concerned about getting it wrong, and also with a withdrawal factor, as you might expect given their social profile. Now, when we look at the parents of these children, or at their spouses and partners, we find that the concerns that these people have about them are very narrow. Whereas when you study ADHD children and adults, the concerns are pervasive. In virtually every domain we look, you're in trouble. Whereas with SCT, there's a lot of your life that's good, that's okay. But school and work are where the problems tend to gravitate. And then second to those would be the social shyness. Only two studies have looked at family history of mental illness. My study found that there was a greater history of anxiety disorders and learning disabilities in these families. But a second study 